You're listening to another Geek Pride podcast. Hi there, this is Johnny from Geek Sun, and this is the Geek Pride podcast, and I am with... Matt Geary on his lonesome. It is just me and thee this time, Johnny Boy. Um, for everybody who's listening to this episode, uh, this is our second version of this uh, podcast because <laughs> the um, the ever doomed, the ever uh, what's the word? <laughs> Somebody just hasn't got very much luck. Sean Wallace, his audio <laughs> after a really good hours worth of conversation last week um his audio didn't his audio didn't work and uh, i just had that feeling that it was going to happen uh I, I made sure that he had it all recorded and i said make sure you save that man and it didn't work his computer this- hates his computer hates him i think he's got <laughs> gremlins in his computer or something i have no idea but uh it, it just happens all the time per guy i feel so bad for him is this why you didn't invite him back today? No, 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 not at all. I, I actually asked him. I actually asked if he'd come in and stuff. Um, it doesn't happen very often. It just seems to happen when we got, you know, and we have a really good conversation. And it's going really well. And then uh, things go wrong. Unfortunately, that is the world with technology. Shit does go wrong. For example, I think one of the first interviews I ever did for Geek Pride uh, was a guy called Mark Cox. Um yeah, this was years back, and uh, he is basically, him and a bunch of his mates, um, they are all sort of very good with sort of the massive Star Wars fans, they're all very good at um, creating things, DIY, building, they've got expertise in doing all things, and they all went across to Tunisia, and their whole thing was to rebuild Lars Homestead from Star Wars, and basically this, uh, which basically Luke's house, had been neglected it was a set from back in the 70s and they left it'd been left in a tunisian desert unloved and it was run down and they went over there and they uh, rebuilt it and um they they actually brought me back some star wars sand and stuff which was pretty awesome but uh, yeah his first he was my first ever sort of uh, interview and the first time i recorded it 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 didn't work (laughs) so i had to phone him up again and ask him over uh, and I had to do what was going to be an audio um, an audio interview. turned out just to be a typed one because I had to sort of kind of get some of his answers and remember what he had said and blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. And it was a nightmare. And I felt very oh, embarrassed. Yeah. So, <laughs> Sean, we feel, we feel your pain, my friends. We feel <laughs> your pain. But thanks for coming back anyway, Johnny. I appreciate yeah, no your worries time. At all. And I'm sure you're a busy man. Um for all of you, you won't be able to see this because it'll be it's audio only. But uh, briefly, when we looked on Skype, Johnny's sitting on the Eye of Sauron. You've got an Eye of Sauron um, chair behind you, or you're on one. Yeah, it's it's the whole table. We've got um, four printed chairs with the Eye of Sauron, and the the middle of the table, the plain surface, uh, is the Eye of Sauron as well. Oh, that's it's, amazing. Uh, I, yeah, I, 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 I'm a massive, and I, I, I can't emphasize this enough, Johnny. I am a massive, massive Lord of the Rings fan. Have been since I was a bit of nipper. Um, I, I love everything that's Lord. Of the Rings. I've got all the books. I've got like limited editions. I've got um all the toys from the, from the the, the films, and wow. um yeah, I'm ever so slightly obsessed. Love it. Really. Love it. Love well, it. Love we- it. We live in, in Worcestershire, which is um, close to where Tolkien sort of uh, grew up and, and lived. Well, and... Ma- uh, another thing, here's another reason. My uh, my grandparents um, on my mother's side uh, are from Oxford. Well, my grandfather's Maltese, but they, they lived in Oxford. And uh, obviously Tolkien spent a lot of his time in Oxford. And yeah. their house is uh in a place called um uh i can't even remember it now uh, somebody uh, 
somebody mentioned uh because I, I did a thing on geek pride about uh the death of Jared tolkien uh, it was an anniversary thing and this guy went oh i live on this street and he's he's um, buried across the way and i was like no way my grandparents and my mother grew up on that street for the life of me i can't remember the name of it now it'll come to me later anyway uh, out the back of their house there's a playing field and across the playing field is a cemetery and tolkien is buried in that cemetery so as kids we used to uh play in the the playing field which had like swing sets and everything and then yeah. we used to have a wander around and have a look at tolkien's uh tolkien's grave which has lots of little uh fans come and leave little sort of like uh, trinkets and toys and things beside really, his grave yeah. which is really cool so that's yeah amazing. that's it the you know that's where the love came from that, obviously my dad was a massive lord of the rings fan but the fact that my mother um sort of grew up in that area and lived near I, it kind of now i realize why my dad might have started going out with my mom actually <laughs> yeah <laughs> um uh, it's going to really annoy me the name of my mom the streets hi it's really going to bug me oh well you know what's going to happen we'll be mid through this podcast and i'll go that's it that's you it. Just shout it out yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. So, for a second time round, Johnny, uh, for everybody who doesn't know who you are, what you do, uh, can you give us a quick um, uh, rundown on uh, your job, who who Geek and Son are, what your what you do within the company, etc. Yeah, absolutely. So, Geek and Son, we we design and produce and, and manufacture geek furniture. The main feature, the main uh, reason for our existence is is board game tables um so the whole point the whole thing came about that the, the boss mr geekinson um he is a massive board game fan but has a busy household lots of kids wife dog all things like that uh and it's not a big house <laughs> so he would set up a board game on a you know on a, a saturday afternoon and then come saturday evening after only a couple of hours playing, he'd be told very firmly that he needs to pack away because it's time to use the dining room table as a dining room table. So they'd need to set up for, for dinner. Um, so he, he got sick of this because this was becoming a, 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 a real pain. So he designed a table uh, that has a game vault inside and you can take the table leaves off and play your game. And then you can just pause a board game by putting the table leaves back on and your board game will just stay in one piece uh, uninterrupted whilst you use the table uh, and then you can you can just go back to it when you want so you know pausing I, a board game overnight or for dinner or for an hour whatever it might be and i, I can't emphasize how good that is um because Ooh. i have a gaming group and uh obviously we try and play for as long as we can but you know invariably when you're playing campaign games you know you're going to get to a point where you have to stop because you're all dying it's like three in the morning and everybody's you know drunk or uh fading and you have to stop and to have something where you can literally just leave it put the mm-hmm. put the slats back on the table and leave it and come back to it later is amazing yeah definitely i mean Board games essentially is is that's what it's perfect for, um, but pretty much anything as well. I'm a I'm a big Lego man. Um, I've got four kids and they love <laughs> Lego. Um, I don't think there is a kid or a, a sort of a father or even a mother who has kids who doesn't like Lego. I, I think yeah. it's just one of these sort of global phenomenons that you know. I don't think you'll meet anybody who hasn't got favorable things to say about Lego unless they're standing on it, of course. <laughs> that it's a different story um yeah uh, i i've got a funny lego story i'll get to in a sec but have you have you seen the lego batman movie yet? no i wanted no. to but my girlfriend uh, i forced her to watch the lego movie you know everything is awesome oh, yeah. and because she's not overly a massive geek and she's you know she doesn't she likes lego because her kids like it uh but she doesn't want to watch a film about it and yeah. um yeah, I uh, that was kiboshed quite quickly. Uh, I wasn't uh, I, after watching the the Lego movie, which she didn't like very much. I don't know why, yeah. but you know everything is awesome. Uh, but uh, yeah, she she wouldn't let me watch it. The 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 Lego Batman movie we went this weekend, 
uh, and it's 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 up there with with one of my favourite films now. The yes, bits in there for everybody. It's so good. The kids loved it, um, but I went away chuckling. Uh, it was it was fantastic. It was fantastic that night. Um, we got home, and I had a. <laughs> uh, I'm still like a twelve year old, but that can drink alcohol. So <laughs> we, we had two big Lego sets, Lego Batman sets. Uh, yeah. We had the Penguin's car. And, and Batman, Batman's car, and uh, I was sat there with a bottle of champagne, just drinking champagne, playing Lego, set, uh, building Lego, like some eccentric man boy. <laughs> uh, it was it was strange to watch. <laughs> um, and what, one of my little cherubs, my my funny Lego story. You don't like standing on Lego, nobody does. Um, but I actually had um, a near death experience with lego where my little girl um, i was eating a bowl of cereal very quickly as i was rushing to get out of the house ready for work and she very kindly sprinkled some lego in the cereal uh, but then uh, just got in the cereal i didn't see it big spoons full uh crunched down broke a tooth nearly choked uh, my wife had to come and slap me hard on the back to to get the lego uh, that was nicely lodged in my throat out um, and I should have a, a bad relationship with Lego now. I shouldn't like Lego after that. But Lego still... nearly killed you. It did. It did. <laughs> oh man! To be honest, actually, I remember being very young, and for some reason, putting Lego in bowls of milk and stuff kind of seemed like you know, like something you would do. I don't know why yeah. it was. It was just like I remember sort of asking my mum if. I could make something, you know, she's like, oh, well, do you want to make some food? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got a bowl and I got some milk and I got all these like things that kids think you should put in stuff. And then at the end, you know, the coup de gras with some Lego. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and in my not? mind, that was like perfect. That was just like, this is going to be amazing. And it's I cool. remember giving it to my dad and I'm sort of kind of looking at it and going, mmm, <laughs> sort of ignoring so you, the Lego pieces. Your, your dad sounds like a clever dad, yeah. but he ignored it. <laughs> I'm obviously not a clever dad because I hate man. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest, in in, in your defence, you didn't realise it was um it was thrown in there uh, through subterfuge, wasn't it? You were you were distracted, and then she just chucked it in there. Exactly that. Exactly that. <laughs> right. So um, these tables you, that mm-hmm. um, are being made. Uh, obviously, we talked about uh, the process um last last time um but you mentioned that they are also like spill resistant as well as having lots of little uh gadgets not ga- well i suppose you, you you could say gadgets or little ancillary add-ons you can put on them as well yeah the the top of the table again so how it all came about was was the fact that that mr deacon sir martin had to um design a table that he could use and just having the game vault with the leaves on top was the first thing, uh, and then his, his the prototype got got uh, used by his family. So all of a sudden, then his kids would, for example, spill um, a, a drink over the top of the table when the leaves were together. It would all leak through. It would destroy what was underneath any games. The the inset, which is uh, like a base, like a pool table. Um, that would obviously then have, have watermarks on it. So he then had to decide, right, okay, we've got to solve that problem and we make the leaves uh, waterproof, i.e. there's a, a, a keep dry system, um, which is some rubber seals and the way the leaves are made that when they're all pushed together, you can spill water or whatever on top of the table and it just drains down to the side where we've got a little drainage system and then we'll just go onto the floor. Um, and it means it protects whatever's underneath. If you've got a game set up or whatever it is, it's protected. And he came about that idea by the, the kids sort of using and, and ruining the table. Right. The accessories that go on the table as well. So you can get accessories that clip on and off, cup holders, bins, uh, dice tower, GM station, whatever it might be. And they clip into the rail system that goes all the way around the table. Now, he designed that and thought, brilliant, jobs are good, that's all done, clip them on. Minutes later, the kids come by, 
and push down on the accessories or sit on or stand on whatever the accessories is they're clipped to the table and the table the whole table the whole side of the table the rail system would snap all right so all of the accessories have a breaking point to make sure that if anything does happen if you do lean on an accessory of whatever it might be the accessory will break not the table and we'll replace accessories not a problem very easy to do quite a quick process um, but a broken table obviously is going to be a bit more long-winded a bit more costly um, and it's not ideal for anybody so the, the tables have been uh, kid tested yeah child proofed basically absolutely absolutely right. yeah they they are they're they're amazing looking pieces of kit. Like I I fell in love with when I uh, I don't even know how what's happened. I, it might have been something's popped up. No, I know what happened. One of my uh, one of my friends uh, posted something on our gaming group and went check out these tables and I was like oh my god, this, I'm in love. It's like the the best thing ever. It's like it's got like you know it was I think it was one of the uh, the Denise's that had obviously the lights in the inside and it was a guy he posted video of a guy reviewing one and he was taking the slats off and he was showing all the things and different layers and the lights yeah. and everything and i was like it's so beautiful man it's so beautiful yeah <laughs> and, uh yeah that's why i got in contact with you guys because i was just like this i i need to have this in our lives this is amazing <laughs> this is like the best thing ever yeah they're they're good they're good i'm i i love the table that that we've got and i'm not I, I'm, a, I'm new to the board game scene, definitely. Um, I am a geek. Uh, I, I was saying before, it's something that I've had to, I've had to accept and embrace my my geekiness. You know, I've had to come out as a geek. Well, you do though. I, that's I think um, with us as a website, it is like coming out. It is like you know, um, you know, you know, sort of similar. What's the word? Uh, I can't even think of the word now. Gone off my head. Uh, similar instances. It isn't the word, but it'll do. Um, it would be like, you know, sort of gay pride. You know, having yeah. been proud of being gay and coming out and saying, look, this is who I am. This is what I am. And it's the same sort of principle. You know, you shouldn't, as, as a man boy who enjoys Batman <laughs> and champagne, you know, you shouldn't be sort of ashamed that that's what you enjoy. That's your part of you. That's what makes you you. Yeah. And that's that's what it is being a geek, a pride geek. Yeah, I've I've embraced it, and uh, like I said, I had to I had to sit my family down and say, guys, <laughs> I need to tell you uh, <laughs> something. And for them, it was you know it was no surprise. They've known all along. <laughs> We've known. Um, yeah, yeah. As I like I said before, as I was sat there in my Iron Man pajamas, uh, <laughs> drink, drinking out of my my Ghostbusters mug. With your with your, with your with your uh, your your Hulk hand, <laughs> with my Hulk hand yeah, uh, and then yeah, they're cool. They're cool with it. Like, um, they're 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 happy for me, and I think that's that's the support from them has has really made the job that I'm doing now a lot easier as well. <laughs> well, I think I think uh, especially sort of other halves, you know, they I think they especially if they're not overly geeky. For example, my my other half is isn't overly sort of geeky. She, you know, when when we first started going out, um, I had to sort of emphasize to her. I was like, you know, I'm a I'm a bit of a geek, and she's like, oh yeah, so you got glasses, you're a bit geek, you know, you know, but you're in a band, you got tattoos and things. I was like, yeah, yeah, but I need you to understand, I'm a massive massive nerd as in I, I have toy soldiers i collect things and there was that whole sort of pause of like hmm am Ooh. i okay with this or am i not and to be honest in her defense she's embraced it fully and uh she accepts me for who i am and, and quite enjoys it i think in her mind and uh, in the mind of, um, of a lot of other halves i'm sure you know a geek's a safe bet i think you know intelligent um, yeah. you know, more likely to spend their weekends sort of uh, doing, sort of playing games, painting models, doing sort of uh, intellectual things and maybe gambling, womanizing and um, other such frivolity. Yeah, it, it's, it could be a bit like um, Fifty Shades of Grey, right. where, uh, you know, where he like leads her down into the dungeon. And, uh, <laughs> he, he like opens the door, but instead of being Mr. Grey, he was just a geek. And he opened the door, 
and there was just like stacks of board games and dolls and pop figures. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, yeah, that that could be a twist to a movie. We could we could get get yeah. the, the the rights out to. <laughs> but, but I put it to her. I said, "It's like you know, have you ever seen Forty Year Old Virgin?" It's like, "Yeah, it's a funny film." And I say, like, "Yeah, yeah, the Forty Year Old Virgin." Take out the fact that I'm, a, I'm not a virgin. That's me. All, that that all guy's. 40. Yeah, or forty. I'm getting there, but you know, I'm not forty. But it's like, yeah, you know that that's kind of me. Think of all those toys and stuff. And she says, "Oh, I haven't seen that many in your house." And I was like, "Yeah, well, you know, converted my garage, and you know, it's gonna be a lot in there." So yeah, but uh, hey ho, there you go. And the uh, it seems all it's all good. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so um, back to the tables again. So we got we got a bit um, sidetracked there. Um, you were telling me uh, before we were we got onto this podcast that um, you've got you got clients in uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, we they're everywhere. We we ship worldwide, and um, how we... does that work? By the way, do you have um, do you have sort of uh, what's the word? Uh, distrib- oh, sorry, places that make them in uh, different countries, or is it literally does it all come from the UK? We're we're based in the UK, yeah, um, and the tables are produced in Poland. It's a it's a family ah. business. So Mr. Geekinson and, and his his wife, um, they live in the UK. Their brother, so Martin's brother-in-law. Um, is the production manager over in Poland. Right. Um, and for example, like, you know, the, we've got our own delivery drivers for Europe. Um, anything outside of Europe, it gets shipped off and, and is uh, delivered that way. Ah, um, uh, right. But we deliver in our little geek, well, not little, it's huge, uh, geek and some van. Uh, we turn up with the, with the tables on our own delivery team. Um, and even some of those are, you know, relations to to, um, to the Geekinson family. So it's really good. And the fact that we've got that really close bond with the production and production manager, it means that if we've got an idea, if we've got something that we want to put in place real quick, you know, a new design, a, an amended design, something a bit special, a bit funky, we get it done uh, because we can really quickly have that that call and, and put things forward and then we can do it really quick and uh have you obviously the um our, our, our saudi friends uh some you know in dubai and stuff are quite extravagant have you had any sort of extravagant requests not extravagant requests but we are going to a show called big boys toys <laughs> uh and um if you if you are to google that Please just be careful what sites you're clicking. <laughs> yeah. My mind's my mind's going away here. Yeah, I think last time Sean Sean had a more um reserved idea of what he might find on online if he searches big boys toys compared to yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kinda of, my mine was in the gutter. My mind was completely <laughs> in the gutter. <laughs> um but Big Boys Toys is this show in Dubai where um you know you see like these gold plated Ferraris and these diamond encrusted Nikes and hoverboards and uh, Bugattis with uh, TV screens in them and all things like that. It's it's that show, uh, Big Boys Toys, that we're going to. Right. And it's going to be a table that will be exclusive. It will be a table like no other that we're designing at the moment. It's on the same principle, so you've got the idea of the game ball, you've got the idea of the removable lead, the lights, the speakers, all things like that. But it's going to be something pretty special um, that is just going to be for that show because we're, we were invited by the Dubai royal family um, wow. who, who run the show. Um, and we were invited by them to to come along. So we've, we've got to pull out all the stops and make sure that it's going to be something that... that uh, will fit with the rest of the show. Um, and I'm just going to... that They give you this chance to um, to take part in the show as well. So you can test drive all these Ferraris and these, uh, you know, these these really expensive cars, the Bugattis, the, the, the Porsches, all things like that. Um, I wasn't really that fussed until they told me they've got a monster truck <laughs> and I can have a go in a monster truck. Oh, yeah. 
So as, as everyone else is there cruising in their cars, going around the track, I'm just going to be running things over in a massive monster truck. <laughs> getting <laughs> can't getting chased by the Saudi the police in their stupidly fast car. Have you seen some of the some of the cars they drive? You know, they've got like they've got supercars as police yeah. cars. It's like it's yeah. insane. It's mad. It, it is unreal. Yeah, but um, um, I'm not sure. Uh, it's obviously something I remember from the last conversation we had. Um, you were talking about sort of developing touchscreen um, technology within the table at some point in time. Yeah, we we're, again we're always looking to see what is going to be the next thing and what what people will want. So. Um, there's a few different options that we're looking at, either with a screen in a table um, or there is something we're, we're talking. It's very, very early stages, but we're talking with, with um, uh, people about a, a touch screen um, that will go into a table, whether it be a coffee table or whether it be one of the bigger tables. Um, no, it, it would be it would be stupidly expensive, no doubt, but... I think, you know, in my mind, I have this visage of a table. You take the slats off and you literally have the the whole board at the bottom is literally like a touch screen and you can mm-hmm. change the sort of the maps effectively. So like, you know, I'm a tabletop mm-hmm. gamer. I play D- Dungeons and Dragons. I play all kinds of things. Being able to change different things on that would be absolutely interactive as well. So if you have models and it knew where they were and stuff, that would be absolutely phenomenal. Unfortunately... Yeah. No doubt, stupidly expensive though. The reason we're talking to these guys is is that actually we found something that won't be stupidly expensive because otherwise we don't want to alienate, alienate people and, and sort of rub it in their faces. And, do you, you know, do like, you find that um like the, the the table you've got quite a good range so you've got sort of like the smaller ones um sort of more more affordable and then obviously you've got quite expensive ones as well. Do you are you, do you find people are put off by them or? Is is it all goods? It's it's a difficult one. The, the tables are bespoke, so they're custom built. So if somebody gets in touch with us and says, "Look, this is what I want, but this is my budget," then we work and say, "Well, okay, if if we don't do this, but do it in this way, or you know, all right, you've asked for a big table, but it's, budget wise, it's not realistic, but we could do this size with X, Y, and Z." We we work to get a quote together that that is going to be reasonable. Brilliant. Brilliant. I mean, they are a luxury. You, you, there, there's no sort of two ways about it, but it's not actually any real difference between any other hardwood furniture. You, you, you certainly um, can find regular tables out there without lights and without cup holders for pretty much the same price. This is true. I have one in the house. It's just made of wood and it, it costs me a fair bit and mm. <laughs> it doesn't do any cool stuff <laughs> no cool stuff on your table yeah <laughs> uh, there's no cool stuff on that it, it literally is just a table i put stuff on it i feel like i'm like oh right i've got to clear stuff off it now so yeah there you go yeah your, your table will be with you um within the next where are we today so it's going to be within the next Three weeks, three four weeks. I cannot wait. I think we need uh, to um, need to get that sorted and stuff. Make sure we get uh, Julietta down and stuff because she's quite excited about the whole thing. When I talk to her, so yeah, can't yeah, wait. absolutely. Super Although excited. The, the delivery is um, is around the same weekend that I'm in Pax East in Boston, and I was thinking, well, do I do I pay Matt by saying, well, we'll de- delay the delivery just so I can come up, or do I just send the table up um, without me going? So I've, uh, I'll put it to you, Matt. What should we do? Should we delay it? Yeah, it's up to you. You know what? So? I, you know, you've been we've been talking about this for so long now that um, <laughs> I wouldn't want to. Um, I wouldn't want to. What's the word? Um, deprive you of uh, your chance. Uh, to show it off so by all means if you want to if you want to be a part of it then yeah brilliant do it i i have no problem i'm sure i can wait an extra week so uh, I, I wouldn't do it to you man I wouldn't <laughs> do it. we'll we'll send the table up and then i'll, I'll come up for maybe a couple of weeks after but we this is the trouble with this year we've got so many different cons um and because we're worldwide and because we want to continue that um, you know, we did our first con last year over in America, um, and we, we're going to be doing some more. So, like I've just said, I'm you know I'm off to Pax East. Um, we've got uh, 
Comic Con, Insomnia, UK Games Expo, Gen Con. They and the just launched uh, the, Unplugged. The uh, and, Game and Expo, you are sponsoring that one? Yeah, so we've gone from from the past sort of four years since um, since Martin started. He's gone from a, like a little two meter booth with a, a, a prototype of one of the tables to we're going this year for 2017 as a sponsor, um, and we've got some big big plans in place as well. We really want to sort of flex our muscle and show off what we can do. It's real sort of um, fantasy stuff what we can achieve with these tables and what we can, how we can make them look and how we can have them appear. Epic. So not just the printed mats and printed chairs, but we've got, we've got some big plans coming up to, um, to the UK games expo this year. Um, what is, uh, how, so you've been, you've been to a fair few conventions now. Are they the first ones you've been to in, in general or uh, have you been to conventions before? No, I never had, never had. Um, and then the first one I hit was, yeah, it was UK Games Expo last year. And that gave me this massive understanding of, um, of what's out there and how passionate people are as well. Because um, I was maybe being a bit naive and just thinking, yeah, you know, geeky job, cool tables. Yeah, it's fine. But then I had a real eye opener when I came to UK Games Expo and, uh, I was blown away. Love it. Absolutely love it. What's been your favourite uh, convention so far? Um, between Essen in Germany... I'm so jealous, by the way. I really yeah. wanted to go to Essen this year. Couldn't. And we went over to uh, America at the end of the year. We went over to LA and we had some bits to do in LA um, because the guys at Geek and Sundry I've got one of our tables there. And we went then from LA to Texas and we went to BGG Con, um, which was completely different. It still had all the hype and still had the big crowd and things like that, but it was more intimate. It was more guys there playing 24-7. Uh, the hall was open 24 hours a day and they made the most of it. They would play wow. and play. Um and that was cool. I really enjoyed that just because people were more than happy just to sit you down and just get you to play a real quick game. Because um, I think we were talking last time, your 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 stamina is up there, isn't it? You, yeah, you... My, 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 my game in stamina is, uh, you know, if I was a and d character, I'd be like top level when it comes to sort of game and stamina. Because I'm all about games that take 14, 15 hours, days even. I'm all yeah. about that, yeah. Whereas well, you're more I... of a quick game sort of guy. I love a quick game that you can introduce to people really quick as well. Um, exploding kittens, raised goblets, um, all things like that. Just real quick, simple, but really fun games. I've not played Exploding Kittens. Uh, my friend, uh, my, 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 my lifelong hetero life partner, Russell, who I've known for ooh, 30, 31 years, I think we're on now, 30 years. Um, we've known each other since babies, pretty much. Uh, he gave he gave me Exploding Kittens with um, some other bits and bobs for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so uh, what I, what would I expect from said game? Tension. Tension? <laughs> <laughs> it's really, yeah, honestly, it's like, uh, it's got that whole sort of Russian roulette feel where there's absolutely your game plan has to go out the window you can't have a game plan because um it, 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 there's just no way that you can control what's going to happen um and it is just so fun it's so quick so easy to learn i think that's why i love it is because it's easy to learn really easy to teach um and even people who aren't gamers like my friends who they have been supportive about me coming out as a geek um <laughs> <laughs> but they're still big, burly men, 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 that, uh, that that would look down their nose at a game. But I'll, I'll teach them Exploding Kittens, for example, and um, they'll love it. They absolutely love it. And then they'll, they'll sort of discreetly ask, yeah, you know, if we're, if we're hanging out this weekend or whatever, well, uh, 
you have a game of exploding kittens maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> well it's true i and, think you get sort of um and it's my it's been my experience that you know i have a core game a core set of friends who i play sort of more complex games with and stuff um and trying to get sort of your non sort of overly geeky friends into these sort of things you have to do it in a sort of you know in a side sort of way and it's better to start off with sort of maybe less complicated games now uh, for me like i said i've never been into overly into card games until more recently and it's because like we talked about this uh the last time uh somebody introduced me mike orvis uh and one of the other hosts for our, our podcasts um he introduced me to a game called resistance and resistance is basically it's a card game and it's basically a case of you're given a card which is your character and your character's either blue it's basically one of the good guys and he is a resistance fighter or red and he's a government agent and it you take turns and each person has to choose a team to go on a mission and it's up for the resistance fighters to succeed the mission and it's up to the um uh government agent to fail it but the thing is you've got to fail x amount or you've got to succeed certain amount or a uh, fail certain amount to win the game and yep. it's all about the tactics and how you do that and when you do that it's because you don't want to get caught because the whole thing is is finding out who's the spy and who's not the spy and it's amazing because you're literally especially if you've got about seven or eight people and you're just like you're a spy you're definitely a spy and then the spy who's you know hasn't been fingered is sitting there going yeah they're totally a spy and you get really <laughs> it's just i remember my friend and his girlfriend who are completely not nerds in any way shape or form and I, they came over for a dinner party i had and um it was all very sophisticated but i said like, oh we're gonna try this game he says oh you know i don't like board games and stuff and i was like yeah come on man it's just it's a little card game it's very easy and stuff and they got well into it to the point where he was sitting there across from his fiance kind of going right we're getting married soon if you're lying to me if you're a spy and you're lying to me then this wedding is off and he was getting really upset with her and she's like i'm not and i said he john don't listen to her you i've known you i've known you for so many years now man she's lying to you she's she's lying to you and she was getting pissed off with me and because i was the spy at the time and it was amazing such a good game really so you were just fueling the uh <laughs> yeah i was that and that's it but the thing is you can fuel each other because uh we play we we had like uh, my friend had like a thanksgiving i know we don't do thanksgiving over here but they had a thanksgiving meal um and we had like a load of people around and it was me and sharon as uh, same again and she's just uh, she just had this look of guilt so i'm like you're a spy like i wasn't this time i said like, you know she's like well you're pointing your finger you're a spy and we spent the entire game basically saying to each other we were spies and it turned out that neither of us were spies and because of that we basically shot ourselves in the foot because everybody else thought we were spies and then the, the spies won and it was just yeah it's just one of those games that can get quite heated especially if you've had a bit of alcohol yeah yeah <laughs> but it's a brilliant definitely you should try it if you ever get a chance to get it my friend pick up resistance brilliant easy game to play hard game to master and it it's just brilliant unfortunately each game's different each each time you play it's different but you have this residual sort of hate for the person the last time even though they could be a completely different character and they might not be a spy this time you've still got that whole you betrayed me last time you, you're a betrayer <laughs> and, and, and you, you can't quite trust them so it just adds this sort of extra level of sort of um mistrust <laughs> brilliant game brilliant game awesome yeah brilliant game anyway uh, I can't even know where I don't even know where that all came from. I, I, we we just sort of kind of gone off on a tangent now. There yeah. you go. Yeah, but um, okay. So, um, oh yes, we were talking about conventions and stuff, and people who sort of um play lots of uh, big games. And you were talking about the one in America where they sort of they were there for like twenty four hours playing games and things. Yeah. Um, so what sort of conventions have you got uh, coming up this year then? Um, we've got we've got some slightly different ones because because PAX is is traditionally more sort of computer games. Yeah. Um, so I'm heading over to PAX East just to give it a whirl, see what what's going on but as geeking, so not just a, on my own. Um, and then we've got the usual suspects, so UK Games Expo. Uh, and Essen 
BGD will be going to again. We've got big boys toys. We're going to be going to Gen Con with it being the 50th anniversary. Right. We'll be at Gen Con as well. Um, and then we're going to do some other little bits. Um, we've got, again, we've got a table with the guys from Yogscast. And um, they will be taking the table to Comic Con and Insomnia. All right, okay. Uh, and we'll be going along as well. And again, a bit different, something a bit new. Comic Con, not necessarily something we've looked at before, but really can't wait. Really is this can't. the one in London? There is, yeah, there's one in London in May yeah. and then October, I believe. Yeah. Yep, and I can't make the one in May because my damn sister's getting married. Ugh. You've, you've got a lot on this year, haven't you? Yeah, but it's all weddings this year. I'm so annoyed. It's just like I've got weddings and stag do's. All my friends are getting married. All my family are getting married. And it's just like I've literally got this huge list of uh, of stag do's and weddings. And they're all on the dates when I usually go on conventions. So it's just <laughs> like I was wanting to go back to San Diego this year. And I don't think I'm going to be able to do that now. And I wanted to go to MCM in London and May. I can't do that. And all these other ones. I'm just like, God damn it. I just want to I, go to the bloody conventions. I they're amazing. You. They're amazing. Like I, you know, they're they're massive. The bigger ones, like London as well. Uh, London, San Diego, the huge, huge, huge events, and it's like the gaming thing. I think we talked about this last time again. Whereas it, movies and games, as in uh, computer games, are generally the big thing in these conventions. But tabletop gaming has now definitely become a thing. Uh, it's definitely become something that is uh, more acceptable, more enjoy, you know, enjoyed by more people even. And yeah. um, it, it's becoming bigger, especially in sort of what are uh, generally just gaming, uh, computer gaming conventions and stuff. They've started to bring out sort of tabletop games, for example, Play Expo in Manchester. I think they do ones in Leeds and, and other things. They have their own... Um, actual sort of i can't remember how how, what they call it but they have their own section just for tabletop gaming and it's amazing and it's brilliant because there's so many similarities obviously within the sort of kind of the genres it's just that one's more tangible than the other and yeah i think they they fit very well yeah definitely and like i said pax as well pax are doing they've launched pax unplugged um which is solely going to be a pax gay uh, a pax uh game event but just a tabletop event um, so that goes to show that they're they're also you know they know the score they they can see what's happening yeah uh, with tabletop just being absolutely massive so yeah it's um, it should be good and I was listening a while back to you talking about uh, San Diego Comic Con and uh, that's inspired me so that's that's another one I'm going to get to this it's, year as well it's it's so so amazing like I I've been told about it for years and mm. I was like okay I'm going to go to go I'm going to go going to go and um, I didn't sort of, I don't think I prepared myself for how amazing that that place is. It's like, it is literally the center of the earth when it comes to geekness. And it's not like, the convention itself, indoors, uh, it's 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 big, like it's massive. Uh, It's maybe sort of slightly bigger than the one you might get in London. Um, you know, there's definitely a lot more inside because obviously they have a lot more um, celebrities and things because obviously uh, they're in America, it's just there, so they all go. And they all yeah. wander around the convention sort of dressed up as well so you don't know if somebody you've walked past is actually a celebrity or not, which is amazing. But it's the fact that the entire city is taken over. San Diego literally just t- gets taken over by geek culture. All the pubs, like the one we used to go to all the time, Henry's Pub, uh, was t- was a Game of Thrones theme for the whole sort of weekend and stuff. It was amazing. It was so good. Giving away freebies. Everybody wow. is literally just embraces it, and it's just quality. So so much fun. Cannot yeah, that... cannot. Sort of, even I don't think we spent very much time inside. I think we spent more time outside, wandering around all the different areas and stuff. That's yeah. how good it is. You know. That that's what I'm I'm excited about is is the fact that like you said that the whole place gets taken over. Um, because like when I get you know when we went to Texas, I wanted to go and see Texas, um, yeah. but rather than being refined to to the to the hall, um, so with with something like that, it just sounds perfect. But if you're going to spend the money, go abroad, go to America. But rather than just see inside a convention hall, you're going to be going out into San Diego and enjoying 
the whole atmosphere of it being taken over by, like you said, in the whole the whole city. Yeah, it's just, it's absolutely insane. Like you, you get so many people, and you know your average sort of San, San Diego um, is just wandering around. Just as, that's just normal, and yeah, it's just it's brilliant. It's so good. Um, I just I was so I we went we went to Vegas afterwards, and Vegas is amazing mm-hmm. as well. But San Diego, I felt sad leaving because it was such a good sort of experience. You know, yeah. it just sort of. It was really good. The only downside is every bar in San Diego closes at like two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know, if yeah. you're if you're an Irishman like me, and uh, you're used <laughs> to sort of kind of Manchester drinking times as well, which is like five, six in the morning and stuff. You know, it's like ah, uh, if you want to go on a bender, you can't really go on a bender because everything's closed. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> you know you're just like ah, oh. but I suppose it stops you know too much excess drink because you, you drink a lot, but you know there's too much sort of excess drinking. I guess <sighs> there you go. <laughs> but go, man, definitely if you get the chance to do it, amazing. You will love it. You will if you know love it. I, I yeah. just oh amazing. Can't can't sort of. I, I'm trying to figure out how I can get back there again this year and stuff because I was definitely going to go and stuff um, but I'm not sure if I can make it this year which is going to be slightly depressing so we'll see well, I'll, I'll fill you in on how it is definitely. oh no I hate <laughs> what people tell you oh man you totally missed out on this and this and such and such happened yeah and I met such and such and you're just like ah oh, shut up I don't want to hear about it I don't want to hear about it oh uh, no ah alright 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 okay uh, for the last, or say, fifteen minutes or so, um, we'll just talk about some general, some general geekery. So, uh, obviously, I, I ask this of every person who's on this podcast, and because I have no uh, naysayers, uh, my colleagues who don't uh, agree with me on this matter, um, have you seen? Um, have you seen Rogue One yet? I still haven't seen Rogue One, <laughs> Johnny. What are you doing to me, man? You I need know. to go and see that film ASAP. A S A P. And when you do see it, and it blows your mind, and you're like, "Holy shit, Matt! This is the best Star Wars film I've ever seen." You need to tell me that <laughs> because I've... nobody's, you know, everybody likes it, but nobody agrees with me. Like it's the best Star Wars film, and it freaking is. I love it. It's amazing. The, the people I know have who have seen it have. have... Again, yeah, actually, that's quite fair. They've said it's good, but they've not they've not agreed necessarily what you just said it is with it being the best one. Oh, see, and, I, I'm currently I, I say currently I keep I've got like four pages worth of um, rant about it. <laughs> not rant. It's it, it's just oozing sort of love and oh how good it is and how it's better. You know, you know than Empire and things. Never like, oh it can't be better than Empire. Empire is like the be all end all, and I love Empire. Don't get me wrong, love that film. You know, it was definitely my number one for many, many, many years. But yeah. Rogue One is just, it, it's just amazing. I can't, obviously I can't talk much about it because you haven't seen it yet. But what a film, like definitely my best film of 2016. Like, uh, you know, for, you know, I'd say On Par was one of the Lord of the Rings films because, you know, that's how much I loved it. And I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. That that was, that's big for me. Well, I- <laughs> I, I, you know, we, we like you, you said we spoke last week, and and this was mentioned last week, and I did say to myself, right, come on, I've got to, I've got to see it this week, and I didn't, so I failed. So that's, I, I apologise. I will be seeing it. I will be seeing it. Not this weekend because the uh, the guy that I usually see Star Wars with. So like I said, I'm I'm in quite an isolated ah, yes. group, um. And the guy that I usually see my my Star Wars films with, or any other geeky films, which no one else will go with me, um, he's he's not um, he's not been around. The the annoyance is um, that uh, my ten year old has seen it. And yet <laughs> I still haven't. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. No. Um, but it will be it will be done if you, we go you... this weekend. You know. You need we'll to see it in the cinema before it comes out of the cinema, man. It, it, it's just amazing. I loved it. Just such a... Me and my friend, like I said, my friend Russell, I've known for 30-odd years, 
uh, we just sat there and just like, oh my god, such and such happened. Oh my god, he's it. Oh my god, and all the different things, all the sort of like nods to the old films. You know, the fact that it had Gra- it has Grandma Tarkin in it, even though people have sort of sort of had some issues with the CGI and stuff. It was amazing, so so good. So, so how good many film. times have you seen it? I've seen it three times, which, in my defense, isn't too much. It isn't that much because I saw Force Awakens six times. Wow. Um, and that was within the first couple of months. Uh, to be honest, I kind of wish I hadn't seen The Force Awakens that many times because I kind of started to get slightly annoyed with it towards the end. I, I, I loved it at the start and then it gradually got worse for me because I started picking holes in it towards the end. Mm-hmm. And after the sixth time, I was kind of going, that's just a rehash of A New Hope. And it's like, I enjoyed it, but I was just like, it sort of knocked it down a few levels for me, which is a yeah, shame. Yeah because uh, I think I overwatched it so I've been mindful this time with Rogue One not to overdo it so I've, I've watched it three times and you know it's still it's still up there no no niggles yet so all good <laughs> yeah. I've, I've been asked actually to ask you um, again by my, my 10 year old she's, she's a massive Doctor Who fan and she found out obviously that Peter Capaldi is, is stepping down he is he's, yes he's hanging up his sonic screwdriver um, so she wanted to know if you've got any inside information about who might be replacing him, or even if you've got just a hunch who it might be. No, to be honest, you know, you, your daughter's going to hate me for this, by the way. A lot of people may hate me for this. I've never been a huge Doctor Who fan. Um, I don't know why. Um, when I grew up, it was... Uh, who was my doctor when I was sort of uh, growing up? It was... Um... Oh, I can't remember his name. Small guy, glasses. Uh, oh, plays Radagast in in the Hobbits. Yeah, yeah. I, oh my goodness me. Uh, yeah. no, that's going to be another thing that annoys me. the The name of my my mom's street, and the um, the name of this guy, Sylvester McCoy. Ugh, that's it, Sylvester McCoy. Got it. Sweet. Yeah, he uh, he was my dog, and I, I you know I watched it when I was a kid and I enjoyed it. But yeah. it never sort of took, and I never sort of carried on watching it for, for whatever reasons, I don't know. I do watch the odd occasion, but from what I've read and from what I know, um, there's a lot of sort of, there's a lot of direction of it being a woman. So we've heard. So yes, we've heard. Now, there, no, I'm not sure if they'll do it or not. Some, a lot of fans are against it simply because they think it's, you know, why would you do it? It's always been a guy. And then other ones are saying, well, you know, why why wouldn't you have a, a reincarnation, effectively, of um, of Doctor as, as a lady? Um, I don't think it would matter either way. Um, to be honest, I think it might be quite good to have a lady Doctor. Uh, it would be something different, but... Then, when you come to sort of kind of nerd culture, uh, they get very protective of things. And yes. it, change, we fear change. So if things go too much, you know, um, the a prime example is I play a game called Warhammer Forty Thousand uh, tabletop uh-huh. game, and um, you know when there's even <laughs> if they if they make any slight changes to the rules and stuff, there's there's outroar, there's uproar. There's like the sky is falling, the sky is falling. The things should be as they are because that's what we're used to. And then everybody moans for ages, and then gets used to it, and then it's fine. So if yeah. they do bring in a, in a female lead, which I think they should do, and I think might oh. be likely at some point in time, I'd um, like to see it. I'd like to see Olivia Coleman. Yeah, yeah, that would work. Yeah, definitely. I think she's the right balance of quirky and brilliant. To, and that's what you need. Yeah. That's what you need. Uh, I think it's a shame that, you know, I think a lot of... Um, I quite liked um, Christopher Eccleston mm-hmm. as a doctor. Um, but it's a shame that a lot of them tend to do it and then they go, shit, I'm going to be typecast, so they, they stop. So you don't really get a long sort of stint with them, it's always like two or three years. I think Capaldi's been three years, is it? I think. Yeah. He's been three yeah. years. Um, but yeah, I guess that's just the way it is. But I guess in a, in its own way, it, it brings in forced sort of change and forced sort of... Um, uh, it makes it a bit more refreshing because you get a new face and new things that's going to go along. <coughs> yeah. But um, yeah, as it is, I, you, your, your daughter, unfortunately, I, I can't... Um, 
give you any confirmation because one i'm not a huge fan and two i haven't had anything from the grapevine other than there has been sort of talk of there being a female lead but if they will do that or not i'm not sure you don't have to sugarcoat it you could just say to her face i don't care (laughs) <laughs> i'm sorry little girl i'm not i just don't care <laughs> uh, i'm not that sort of guy you know it's just it's, it's just the way it is i've got to be super interested my girlfriend's got kids and um you know the the youngest one is like five uh you know she's just into a lot of things and you're just like i'm just not that interested but i have to act like i'm interested that being said um i'm not i'm not one of these guys who sort of does the whole oh it's all about taking parts it's all about winning and therefore, uh, we went bowling the other day, and uh, <laughs> it's so bad. But she's uh, the 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 kids, uh, Lily. She um, she she does horse riding. She she does comp- competitive pony riding and stuff, uh, show horses and things. And um, she's all about winning. And when we so we went bowling, you know, she had like the, like the little uh like ramp thing that the the kids put the ball down yeah and, like yeah. she's getting some good scores and stuff and she's like rubbing it in my face you know and i'm sitting there throwing gutter balls and stuff just to make sure that you know uh i'm I'm not sort of kind of being mean and then she starts going ah i'm totally winning i'm beating you and starts rubbing it in my face and i just looked at her and went game on <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then i proceeded to obliterate her <laughs> which she wasn't too, she wasn't too amused about I don't think and it was just like that's what you get don't test me yeah <laughs> and I was like I think I might have taken that a bit too far I think you know sort of when, when I started kind of you know sliding on the floor and putting the L sign against my head and calling her a loser I think that's <laughs> spitting in her face as you yeah past. yeah that's what you get that's what you get loser yeah uh, yeah. How um, you, you mentioned your girlfriend there, Matt. How, how are things with you and your girlfriend at the minute? <laughs> uh, my girlfriend's not talking to me at the minute, Johnny. Why um, is this? <laughs> because this is so bad. You know what? And there's going to be a lot of people by the end of this that aren't going to be talking to me. Um, but what happened is one of uh, one of our guys. He, he, we call him our PR guy. You know, a lot of Geek Pride. It's all volunteers, so people just do it for the love of it and the helping out and stuff. And um, the the PR guy, effectively a guy called Josh, he managed to get himself. I don't know where he's got it from, but it's guy. Uh, it's a Beauty and the Beast um, Bluetooth speaker, and it's basically the rose in a glass sort of cabinet. No, it, it it it's tempered plastic, but it looks like glass, and it. it's got like these sort of like frosted edges. It's amazing looking. And it's got lights and everything, and it plays the it plays the Beauty and the Beast music whenever you turn it on, yeah. and. Um, We've got one of these, and it's about two hundred dollars. You can only seem to get it from America or Hong Kong, I think. And um, everybody loves it. Like literally, uh, a lot of ladies, a lot of guys, you like love this thing. And when my girlfriend found out I had this, because she's very much into her princess films and likes her princess films, uh, when she found out I had it, she was automatically, "Oh my god!" So. I'm going to get this then because you're reviewing it. You're just going to give it to me afterwards because you don't like that sort of thing. And I was like, uh, no, I, I, I'm going to review it and give it away because that's what I do for Geek Pride. I don't, I don't generally keep anything for Geek Pride. I'm, yeah. I'm like that. I give it away. I buy things myself and anything I get for free, I generally give away. Uh, I think I've only kept like some Halo stuff uh, years ago, but other than that, I give it away. So I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to give it away. And she's like, what? And I'm like, well. You know, it's only the right thing to do. I've got to give this stuff away. It's, you know, I'm trying to build a website, make sure we get more views. These things are good for the giveaway. People will enjoy it more than I will, etc., etc. And she literally has, she just stopped talking to me. I, I kept on getting like WhatsApp messages sort of going, oh yeah, so, you know, if only I had this awesome rose thing and stuff. And then it's just like, you can tell she hates me, like proper hates me because of it. Yeah. And now I've got friends, I've got friends who um you're saying the same things like well well we've been your friends for ages and it's like i can't just give it to you it's not like that <laughs> i'm not a corrupt sort of i'm not a corrupt uh dictatorship i try to be cool with everything and i can't i've got to do it up on the book by the book and uh yeah so by the end of this i'm gonna have no friends because <laughs> everybody's just gonna fall out with me it's beautiful though man you've seen the video it's a it's a beautiful thing 
I've seen, I've seen, and I showed you before we did this the, the picture that I was sent to remind myself <laughs> to I don't know what what they were to get me to like ask your price. As oh, uh, name, name the price. Well, you know, I'm straight down the line. Unless it's called hard cash, then I would totally give in. So, you know, that's that's totally it. <laughs> but yes, um, I'm rev- I'm I've I've done some shots uh, with my camera and stuff yesterday. Uh, I'm going to do the review hopefully um, today, and then uh, the giveaway will be soon. And I think it's just going to be a case of. Uh, you know, we have a thing where you like uh, the Facebook page and the, mm-hmm. you like the YouTube channel or things like that. The more times you like, the more entries you get, et cetera, et cetera. And it'll literally be a case of random selection using an app. And that will be that makes it fair. And that means, uh, you know, I can't be sort of kind of going, oh, Matt, you just picked, a, you know, you, you just picked Johnny or you just picked your girlfriend. It's like, look, I've done it this way. I'm doing it by yeah. an app. So that way I can't get shouted at. And people won't fall out with me, hopefully. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yes, it, it's it's an it is very good. It's going to get a good review because it, it sounds good. It, it, it's it, it's well sort of it, it's it's plastic, like yeah. don't we? But it doesn't look plastic. It looks real. It's good. So yeah, but yeah. we 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 do get some cool stuff. We get like some we get a lot of Nerf guns and stuff. Like I've got I've got a lot of stuff to give away. I got some really good Nerf guns. Uh, one of our guys has got sent this like huge massive nerf gun which is basically uh it, it's like a cannon you know it's yeah. it fires effectively golf balls you know it's that huge <laughs> um that's come to him and like the guys from hasbro and stuff are quite good with that so it's one of the perks of working for geek pride is you know you you know i might not keep anything that i get i usually give it all away but a lot of my my colleagues get to keep cool things so yeah there you go. yeah that's cool we we get bits when we go to shows we, we get, you know, like a, a little pack, exhibitor pack. And uh, I just can't wait to see what the, the exhi- exhibitor pack will be at Big Boy's Toys. <laughs> <laughs> here you go, a diamond encrusted <laughs> dice. Or, here, here you go, oh, mate, that's going to be amazing. I'm so jealous. Yeah, it, it will be good. It will be yeah, good. And will be good. Right, okay. Um, it has been the R. Uh, we got through all our technical difficulties. Hopefully, uh, there will be no issues with either of our audios. I've got a backup of it. I'm recording this Skype call as well, so hopefully it will all be good. Um, but before we go, uh, Johnny, uh, can you uh, have you got anything else you want to tell us? Uh, websites, Twitters, stuff people should follow, people should know at this moment in time about Geek and Some. Yeah, I mean, I think you mentioned it. Just get amongst it with the Facebook um, because we will very soon be giving away a table. So, um, again, you know, like the Facebook page, the Instagram page, um, come over to the website. There's a, there's a, a um, uh, magazine, not a magazine, what they, a newsletter. I couldn't think of what we were doing then—a newsletter that you can you can subscribe to as well. Um, but details will be there about how you could win your very own Deaconson table. So go and check uh, it out and uh, watch this space. Is it uh, forward slash Deaconson on the Facebook? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. And the Twitter is forward slash Deaconson. Indeed, yes. All right, okay, so it's all forward slash Geek and Sun. So basically, you can get any social media platform, forward slash Geek and Sun, and then geekandsun.com or .co.uk? Dot .com. Dot .com. And geekandsun.com. So there you go, ladies and gents. Uh, a chance to potentially win one of these amazing tables um, through the guys at Geek and Sun. Um, when we get ours, uh, which will be coming shortly, uh, there will be copious amounts of videos of Matt basically stroking and and generally looking pretty impressed um <laughs> coming up so you can see them in 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 person um but yes um it has been great talking to you johnny um hopefully we can maybe get you back on for a general podcast at some point in time that'll be quite enjoyable yeah definitely and um good luck with this year 2017 hopefully see you at the uh, games expo Yes, without a doubt. You've yeah. been invited by us, so uh, you know we'd love, love to have you there um, and get amongst the fun and shenanigans that will be there. Brilliant. Okay. 
Right. Well, um, I guess it's uh, your time to uh, outro us. So uh, if you can uh, give us an outro. So- oh, oh, I lie. One more thing. We need you to name the podcast. We need a name for this podcast. Ah, yes, we did this last time, which yes. which we can't do. And actually, we haven't even discussed last time it was going to be called uh, Horn Holder. Horn Holder, yes, that was it, which... wasn't it? Because we, we talked about <laughs> how I had a drinking horn and that it was nece- it was necessary for there to be ample space for me to put said huge drinking horn in the in the game table. Yes. Yeah. But we I also think... talked. We also talked about how anything with LED lights um, was better, and we established yeah. this that anything we... with an LED, you can put an LED light on anything, and uh, it's better. Absolutely, and then put yeah. a cup holder on it as well. And it yeah, cup, just... yeah, cup holders and LED. You know, literally, I don't think you can. I don't think anybody can name anything with LED lights and cup holders that isn't cool. You know, I, I, I. I Put a, put a comment in in the comments section wherever this is and tell me something. I guarantee you, you stick some LED lights on that and a cup holder, it's automatically super, super cool. Yeah, without a <laughs> Without, without lights. Right. Okay, so it's hashtag uh, horn holder. And um, so give us an outro then, Johnny. Excellent. Guys, thank you very much. I've been Johnny from Geek and Cern. This has been the Geek Pride podcast. And I've been with Matt Geary, as always. Thank you for listening to us, everybody. And make sure to check out Geek and Son on all their social media outlets and their website with the chance to win one of their tables. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Bye.